Hi, and welcome to Lesson 1, Themed Women Past and Present. By the end of this lesson, your learners will be able to create a Wikipedia web page using HTML and CSS, which can be shared in a variety of ways. A wiki page is designed to give you information about a person, place, or other interesting topics. A Wikipedia page follows a specific layout on the web page, and this is an opportunity for your learners to become familiar with the CSS within the HTML document. What you see on the left side of the screen is the code, and on the right will be the wiki page or web page. In task 1, on line 6, we're going to remove the question mark and write your name. The learners do this and see the change reflected in the header Wikipedia page made by Moving on to task two, there are more question marks below. We can find them and replace them with the correct answers. Most of the question marks are content related and this is an opportunity for your learners to go and research the answers on Google. Please make sure that they take note of where they've resourced their answers because this will be needed for the bonus question at the end. So Anne Frank is famous for the diary she wrote which documented her life during World War II. And on line 17, Anne Frank's house is in the country of. And on line 15, we can see another question mark there. This is dealing with the header size. It starts there with header 3, early life. And if we look on the right hand side, we can see that points 1 and 2 are also bold. We don't want them to be bold, we want them to be lowercase, uh, smaller case, and so we need to make sure that that question mark for that closing tag is also a 3, making the early life 3. We continue down onto task 3, and here we are dealing with a table. In this table, we are going to add a row for Anne's mother, Edith Frank. So on the left hand side you can see mother and then there's a little space there. So the table data is mother. The next lot of table data, which is why we're going to replace the question mark with a D to complete the table. And we're going to complete the closed tag with a D. And, and finally we need to close the table row with a closing tab TR. Now in task 4 we're going to add a row for Anne's sister. Margot Frank. Task 5. What date was Anne born? And we're going to replace that question mark over there with the 12th of June 1929. Going down, this is where the bonus comes in. At the bottom, we can see there's three references. And the bonus says, can you add another reference that you used to research Anne Frank? The learners can simply see that the, there are three list items. And um, to make it easier, we can go and copy. And between those two list tags, we can paste. And they can go and change the name of the source. In my case, it's the timeline. And that completes that page. Moving on to the past tag. Women of the past. We are going to be looking at inline CSS to change colors and various styles within the HTML document. We deal with internal CSS later. In task one, on line 10, we are going to complete this task by adding the color light gray. And we see that is reflected immediately on the right hand side. The next task is to add a horizontal rule in the line below. When we look further down at Rosa Parks, we can see this line separating Rosa Parks as being the heading and the information. And we want it to look the same. Task number three, we're going to make this unordered list or bullet pointed list for what she was famous for into an ordered list, listing one, two, and three. We're going to simply go and change the U to an O. Scrolling down to task four, now we're looking at Rosa Parks and we're going to go and change the background color
task five, we're going to change Rosa Parks, the header, to not be header six, which is very, very small, but to header one. And again, changing it in the opening and the closing taglines. We're going to carry on and complete this timeline table, when she was born and how old she was and which years this correlates to, and then we're going to include the event of the Montgomery bus boycott. Task 9, we're going to replace the bold tags or strong with the italic tabs below. Italics are used when you want to emphasize a certain word or phrase. A common use for italics is to draw attention to a particular part of a text in order to provide emphasis. If something is important or shocking, you might want to italicize that word or phrase so the readers don't miss it. Moving on to the next tab, Women of the Present. We've moved our style CSS to the top of the web page. Let's make our page look good. The layout and the coding look quite different at first glance, but this is purposefully done to illustrate how the internal CSS is what keeps the layout of the web page consistent throughout. In task one, we're going to change the font family to sans serif on line seven. Task two, we're going to change the position of the header to sticky. So at the moment we can see it all moves up and down when we scroll on the right hand side up and down. We take the question mark out, type in the word sticky and get your learners to then scroll up and down and notice what has changed. The header is stuck to the top end. In task three, we are going to now look at the CSS classes. Anything with a dot picture will take on these attributes. So task three says, make the dot picture float left. If I take away that question mark and I write left, all the pictures are now going to be floating to the left if they are, have the CSS class dot picture. If I took left away and I did right, you can see that the pictures some of them at least with the dot picture class will float to the right. We're going to put that back to what is recommended, which is left. And the pictures again, we're going to change the width of that picture to 100 pixels. And we're going to change the padding on the right to 15 pixels. The CSS padding properties are used to generate space around an element's content inside of any defined borders. Learners should notice how the pictures of Jay and Goodall and Malala have now changed, but the others haven't, and we'll get back to that in a moment. Now we look at the CSS IDs, and you can comp compare these IDs to an ID book or a passport, where some specific information is attached to your name. An ID will start with a hash, and in this case we're looking at hash wiki, and here it says, we need to make hash wiki into height 50. If we look right at the top left hand side, there's a little image of wiki. And at the moment it is 25 pixels. And it looks very small and it's not uniform to the other pages. Now we create 50. Looking at task 7, we are now looking at the content over here of there's Jane Goodall, there's Malala, and now we're looking at Greta Grunberg. Add the class dot picture to the image tag. As a bonus, 
we're going to make one of the strong names using the ID My Chosen Wiki page, and it is currently selected to Jane Goodall. And now we're going to make it something other than blue. So here it's blue, and if we go all the way to the top, Jane Goodall, it's blue. So if we go and change this to red, we will see that her name now changes to a different color. And if we want to have my chosen wiki page, we want somebody else's name to be red. We're going to copy that my chosen wiki page. And over here in line 74, if we want to do it for Emma Watson, we can go and give them that ID. Give her that ID. Finally, it is time to put all these skills to test with creating their own Wikipedia page. Yours will be a blank template. Mine is complete. They can go and source all their information from various different sources. They must remember to, to reword everything so that they are not plagiarizing. And they can use this basic format and also all the learnings from the previous pages. Don't forget this is a wonderful um, open and share feature where they can go and share their page with anyone they like, especially other teachers, possibly for assessments and even to their family and friends.